Well, it's Steve White, Trip Boy 89 for Steve Arts 89. Well, we had an announcement today. Um, there were rumours um, that there were going to be some announcements coming from Kurtzman after his SFX um, article. And I wasn't really putting much in that because they've, they've, you know, announced a lot of things that never went anywhere. But Paramount actually announced that Star Trek Starfleet Academy is going to go into production in 2024. It has been greenlit. A little bit of a surprise. Um, I'm glad it's not Section 31. Section 31 is a complete abomination of what Star Trek stands for. Um, so I hope that never gets made. Starfleet Academy, I actually thought Starfleet Academy was a great idea. A lot of people hate it. It's like, oh, teen Star Trek. But you know what? In the context of the Academy and cadets, I think it could work. It would be a really great way to show what Star Trek you know, was about and what Starfleet what was and what it stands for and thereby what Star Trek stood for in the universe that Gene created. It could be optimistic, teaching students, you know, what instead of a cynical dealing with reality in, you know, a future fantasy series, they could actually deal with, you know, being taught optimism and, you know, just, it, it's, I think it really could have worked. And the idea has been out there for decades. I mean, they proposed it back in the 80s, and after Star Trek V didn't do so well, they were going to do Starfleet Academy as a movie instead of Star Trek VI. But with the 25th anniversary coming and the nostalgia, they knew they could market a final Star Trek cast, original cast film, so that's what they did. Harv Bennett was not happy because he was the one who was proposing it and trying to get it done, but that's how close it came to production. It's been brought up a bunch of times because, you know, studios always want young audiences, they want young actors, they want young and um starfleet's always had always had older casts and aging casts because it's always stuck with the original characters like the original series and now next generation all aged um and the idea of having a younger cast i don't have any issue with it the idea of teaching these cadets what starfleet stands for i think really could be a great way to really say something about the future and the future of humanity i thought it was a great idea but they managed to screw it up how are they screwing it up they instead of setting it in pike's era or Picard's era and seeing them as young cadets or seeing them um, come in and teach new cadets. Um, they're setting it in the 31st century with Tilly after post-discovery basically. So they had a great idea. I don't know why it, it had such a hard time getting it in production but um, they finally got it and they're ruining it by setting it in the 31st century. Why? Because the 31st century is too far away to depict realistically or believably. They failed in Discovery to try and do it. They they basically jumped 900 years and all that changed was um, programmable matter, um, starships with separate nacelles, detached nacelles that um, really just make the ship more vulnerable. And, um, oh, they had site-to-site -site transporters in their communicator badges. That, that, was, that, that, was, that was the advancement. So there was no evolution of humanity, no you know, real advancements in technology or society or anything. They just totally failed in depicting the 31st century. Nothing changed. Um, and the only way you could watch the fourth season of, of Discovery and actually get something from it, because it wasn't a bad season by the end. The last few episodes were kind of good. They actually resembled Star Trek. If you thought of it in terms of being set in, you know, the 23rd or 24th century, you had to sort of forget that it was supposed to be said in the 29th, 31st century because it was just ridiculous and unbelievable. So, yes, they had a good idea. I think it really could have worked, but they screwed it up because of when they said it. Now, the show is being um, co-produced by Alex Kurtzman and Noga Landau, whoever that is, and about seven other producers, including Rod Roddenberry for um, Secret Hideout and um, Roddenberry Productions. So... It's a lot of people's greatest fears, teen Star Trek, another show that's co, you know, being co-show run by Kurtzman because I think the idea was we don't mind, I think some people are like, we don't mind if they stay in the same universe, if they acknowledge it's a reboot, reboot or if they keep producing shows for a secret hideout, so long as they're produced by people who actually know Star Trek and want to make a Star Trek show and it resembles Star Trek and it's as good as Picard Season 3, I think people were kind of okay with that. But right away, first season we're getting is, you know, teen Star Trek set in the 31st century in, in the dis post-discovery, discovery sort of era timeline, whatever it is, um, Discoverse. And um, it's co-run by Alex Kurtzman. <laughs> so, yeah, everyone's hating it. No one's happy. Um, I'm disappointed because I think it could have been really great if they'd set it in, you know, 
a different era um, because going to the 31st century was a mistake. It was a way to get rid of discovery, but when they didn't end the series there and they actually went into that century, that was just a disaster. And the only way, like I said, you could watch the show was just forget it was supposed to be set in the 31st century. But, um, yeah, so that's where we're at. Um, that's the news. Um, I, it could have been great. I think it actually could have been great, but I don't think it's going to be. Um, and, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah, um, yeah.